Okay, so let's get rid of that. We'll go straight into chapter nine. And some information there about system V. And the first thing we're going to do is to install some boot scripts. So let's extract the LFS boot scripts and install it. Uh, by the way, let's have a look at the disk space. Yeah, we did, went from 3.7 gig down to 1.6, so you can see it's much more reasonable size for the operating system. There's some information here about device and module handling, how it works, um, how UDEV works. So you can read that in your own time. Managing devices, creating custom UDEV rules, a script's been included that generates initial rules, so let's run that. And you can find out what name was given to the network device by catting that. And you can see the name given is ENP0S3. Um, it does say in some virtual environments the network rules may not be generated because addresses are not consistently assigned. In these cases, this method cannot be used. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, but this is something we need to remember for when we configure the network. Uh, some more information there about CDs and so on. Um, if this is important to you, like you've got multiple CD devices, uh, CD drives or video cards, that will be something you need to look into. Um, in the previous... The procedure in the previous section was not used. You will assign a network card based on the physical characteristics. So I'll say this one's come up with the MP0S3. If you're not sure what your interface name is, you can always run IP link. So you can see that name is there again. Or LS sysclass net after you've booted your system. So it's basically saying it could change possibly. Um, and it does say the interface names depend on the implementation and configuration of UDEV daemon running on the system. The UDEV daemon for LFS will not run until the LFS system is booted. So the interface names interface names in the LFS system can always be determined by running those commands on the host distro, even in the true environment. In my experience, um, I've never seen any difference. That maybe because I'm running Gen 2 or um, the Endeavor OS as a host generally and I've never found any problems to use the uh, true device name if you like so I tend to use them because they do tend to be consistent um, if you do want to use for example ETH0 you're quite welcome to do that but I'm going to use the name that's come up here um, as I've known it to work so if we paste this in we'll create this sysconfig ifconfig ETH0 but I'm going to rename it, as I say, to the interface card that's been designated here. And also I'm going to edit it as well. So the interface name needs to be changed. Uh, the IP addresses, um, the default, I think. Let's check that. Let's save that. Uh, let's do IPA. Yeah, 10 to 15. I think that's the standard one that gets allocated from the virtual machine. So we need to use that 10.2.15. And so we put that in here, 10 dot two dot sorry ten dot zero dot two dot fifteen the gateway will be ten dot zero dot two dot one and the broadcast address will be ten dot zero dot two dot two five five I think that should be correct Uh, resolve.conf 
create that. If we now edit it, domain, I haven't got one, certainly not within the VM, but I'll put my usual one in, which is mynet.org. If you haven't got one, you can leave it blank or delete the line. Name server 192.168.0. Eight and I'm only using that one, so I don't need to put another name server in. But you can get some free ones, there's for example, the Google ones there, there's uh, others available which you can find on the internet. The host name let's echo something to that, so we can call it something like uh, LFS 11. Three demo customizing the host file. So let's edit this. Um, I tend to just delete everything here, that one's not needed. These aren't needed because I'm not using IP6 and this one all to do is put in the IP address we've picked which is 10.0.2.15 Oops, let's undo that and this time we'll type insert 10.0.2.15 fully qualified domain name will be the name we gave it which is LFS113 demo dot mynet.org and the host name is just the LFS113 demo and there's no further aliases and we can tidy this up and put them into columns like that how the system v scripts work well it explains that there we need to create this init tab file for the various run levels and there's some information there about booting the system clock we'll edit this so utc1 um, you leave that as as, they, as it is, you won't need to make any changes. Um, if you're sharing your LFS with uh, an operating system such as Windows, which stores the local time in the non-volatile clock, you want to set that to zero. Um, otherwise, leave it as UTC equals one. Linux always stores time as UTC or GMT, irrespective of what zone you're in, that's calculated separately. Uh, so we don't need to make any changes to that. Um, the etc sysconfig console. This one needs a little bit of tweaking, unless your own country you can see is here. Um, it's best just to copy one of these and then make changes. So if I take this first one, edit it. So, for example, key map for UK is going to be UK. You'd have to put your own country code in there. The font I use is this LAT2-16 and 85591 for Western Europe. The dash 2 is for Eastern Europe. And also I add in log level equals 3 to prevent some of the um, extra kernel messages from appearing that can get quite annoying. So that should be it for that. I'll save that. rc.site file, you don't need to do anything with that. It's just included there for a reference. So we'll skip past that. Bash startup files. Run this command that shows all the locales. You can see these are the ones that are created for the testing. 
Um, I think you could delete these. I can't remember offhand if it's possible or not, whether it's a hack or whether there is a command to do it offhand. Um, so if you find that is annoying, uh, that's something you can look up. But the reason for listing this is to find the locale that you'll be using. So I'll be using this one here. And if you put this command in, and put your locale in here. It'll respond with uh, where is it? Uh, in GB. Yeah, that's the one. It'll respond with the uh, identification that you need for this bit down here. So if we copy and paste that and then copy and paste the response here so en uh, in fact let's copy and paste that so i'm using engb paste that in and then you have to put a full stop in and then the result of this output here there's no charm app or modifiers for the locale I'm in, so I'll just copy from there, paste that in, and that should be it for ETC profile. Now we go on to ETC input RC. We can just copy and paste this, put that in. Move on to the shells file. This tells the system what shells are available. So we've got SH, which points to bash, and we specifically specify bash in case we get another shell installed, which SH points to. Uh, 